bigger world, higher stakes, and an unexpected spin on Lara Croft's character make Shadow of the Tomb Raider the most ambitious in the modern trilogy. There's a lot going on here, but it manages to keep most of its balls in the air throughout 25 or so hours of play. As both a rollicking, horror-kissed action-adventure and an introspective story about obsession and family, Shadow of the Tomb Raider works as a powerful finale to this particular chapter of Lara's history. Shadow of the Tomb Raider tells a great story that continues the series' tradition of high-concept Indiana Jones-style mumbo-jumbo with moments of big, fun, blockbuster-style scripted action. Giving it heart, however, is Lara and her driving obsession. This is a Lara that could have veered into headstrong narcissism. I have to go! I'm the only one! You're the only one that can what? But it's actually kind of awkward and introverted instead. It's a surprising development for the character and adds a shade of warm humanity that was not there before. Sometimes I feel like I have to keep going, and if I don't, then I'll just let everyone down. Shadow of the Tomb Raider also skillfully hits all the emotional moments needed to satisfyingly wrap up Lara's quest that began in 2013. Her obsession is put into question, but we're also reminded of the reasons behind it. It helps that Lara's voice actress, Camilla Luddington, treads the tightrope between the vulnerable and the ridiculous with such ease, He'll use the box and the knife to remake the world! And she's well supported by series veteran Earl Balin as Jonah. We have to trust each other. Still standing after centuries of earthquakes and storms. Tomb Raiding is the primary focus here, thankfully. So story missions feature fewer firefights than the past two games and more lonely traversal. Shadow's puzzle-based story missions, optional crypts, and nine challenge tombs are giant, intricate affairs where ideas are rarely reused forcing you to figure out their rules afresh each time. These are the best puzzles in the series and are genuinely tough. Look at this. The atmosphere in these tombs is incredible too. An omnipresent cult, an unnerving string-based score, and an aggressive subterranean enemy type, the Yaxel, <laughs> mean Shadow of the Tomb Raider frequently feels like a horror game. It makes for wonderfully tense exploration. Lara has a more diverse set of movement options than ever before. Her rappel, in particular, allows for level design that's gratifyingly vertical. These environments will test you in a different way than previous titles. This is true of swimming too, which is surprisingly reasonable, thanks to tight controls, clever puzzle integration, and an emphasis on exploration. Though the fear of drowning is real, taking a wrong turn isn't frustrating so much as it is tense. <laughs> The world built around Shadow's tombs is full of intricate hub areas to explore and brimming with life and activity, particularly in the huge hidden city of Pai Titi. For the first time in a Tomb Raider game, you can wander around talking to select NPCs, listening to their stories and history, and watching their daily rituals. The detail on display here is absolutely stunning, giving a sense of real, lived-in cities. Sadly, the activities available in these locations aren't uniformly compelling. Crypts and caves are a lot of fun to explore with a great selection of outfits and weapons to find and animals to hunt. But Lara's arsenal and skill tree are easily filled just by completing story missions and challenge tombs. Lara is so innately capable that there's a lack of incentive to go off script, and it's not entirely clear how effective a particular weapon will be either. Shadow of the Tomb Raider offers a greater helping of multi-part side quests than previous games, and while they offer a more complex look at the world's inhabitants and how Lara interacts with them, they're not particularly inspired. Fetch quests and clear the area tasks fall short of the imagination found in the challenge tombs, which are also optional, but far more enjoyable. There's less guns blazing combat this time around, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider demands you take a stealthy approach for the most part. Lara can be felled in a handful of hits, so battlegrounds are all about optimizing your tactics to do things quietly. This is perfectly fine and it works well in practice, but it's not particularly interesting or challenging, especially when enemies tend to separate themselves naturally and set themselves up for easy deaths. I did enjoy the addition of plants Lara can eat to give her various temporary status effects, which are particularly useful about midway through the campaign when the Yaxel is introduced, demanding quick reflexes and sharp aim. The best fights I had were against wave after wave of these guys, switching between wolfing down plants and using a crunchy shotgun blast up close or a bow shot from a distance. Come on! 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider meaningfully wraps up Lara's modern journey and convincingly leaves her in a place resembling where she was originally more than 20 years ago. I would have liked a little more incentive to explore the beautiful world Eidos Montreal has created, but I'd much rather have too much content than too little, and Shadow is stuffed to the brim with ideas and devilishly challenging puzzles. I can't wait to see where Lara goes next. For more on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, check out our Everything You Need to Know video and the first 15 minutes of the game.